welcome 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 everyone it is hey shanta q here shanta quillette uh and today we are diving into a super important topic what is hcm and understanding the risk so we have a special guest with us today and soon as she puts in her request, her request just, she's coming in right now. There she is. Here I am. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, trouble are... getting on. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so glad you're here. You know, it's always problems when you, when you got something good to share. When we got something <laughs> really good to share with you all, but before we get started, we just want to say this session was developed by Vindico Medical Education with education grant support from Bristol Myers Squid. Uh, for more details, I dropped a link in the comments and you can follow up there. So welcome. So we're going to let you introduce yourself and then we're going to get started. Sounds good. I'm Anjali Owens. I'm a cardiologist at the University of Pennsylvania, where I run our Center for Inherited Cardiovascular Disease and our HCM program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So we are here to talk about hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy, and I am not a stranger to heart issues. Most people know that I have heart issues here. Um, and so we're going to talk about this particular condition. Now, Dr. Owens, can you start by explaining what is hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy and how does it actually affect the heart? Absolutely. So, so hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM for short, because it can be a mouthful, is a heart condition where the bottom pumping chamber of the heart, what we call the left ventricle, that's responsible for squeezing the blood out to the rest of your body, it becomes too thick. And what I mean by that is the actual walls of the heart muscle become thicker than they should be. And the reason we know that or how we can tell is we have to take a picture of the heart. And we usually do that with an ultrasound and we measure those walls. And if we see that they've become too thick, we know that there's something wrong with the heart and we go through a list of things that can cause the heart to become too thick. And one of them, one of the most common is hypertrophic myopathy. And when your heart becomes too thick, it doesn't work as well as it should. It's not as efficient as it should be. And so what happens, it can get too stiff and it's hard for it to relax and fall. And in some patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it's hard for the blood to get out of the heart and get to the rest of your body. And we call that type of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy obstructive, which means it's hard for the blood to get to your heart. Wow. Wow. I know the heart is a busy, it's, it's a busy organ. It'd be doing a whole, lot of, a whole lot of things, right? I know, I know it, it does a whole lot of things. Um, but what are the common symptoms of HCM and what should patients be aware of? So there are a number of symptoms that HCM can cause. And one important thing as a take home point, you can be completely asymptomatic, no symptoms at all, and still have HCM. So for example, if it runs in your family, it's important to have your heart checked, even if you don't have any symptoms. When we do see symptoms, they can range from something like shortness of breath with activity, the chest discomfort or chest pain, some patients get lightheaded or dizzy, particularly when they try to exert themselves or exercise. Other patients report a sense of their heart beating irregularly or fast or slow, what we call palpitation. Um, some patients actually get to a point where they pass out. And so it can be a range of symptoms. And what makes it hard to diagnose HCM is those symptoms overlap with other common heart and lung problems. For example, young people who feel short of breath when they exercise are often told they have asthma when what they really might have is a heart condition like hypertrophic myopathy. Wow. So I guess it's really important to like follow up with your doctor and really ask additional questions. Even if you are, you know, diagnosed with, with asthma, it's really important to ask follow-up questions or maybe even just request that, maybe request that testing. 
Absolutely. And especially if the testing that they do isn't conclusive. You know, if they say, well, I'm not exactly sure what's causing your symptoms, that's the time to push a little further and maybe ask for a picture of your heart, like an ultrasound or an EKG to see if there's any abnormality that can be found. Wow. And what complications can HCM cause? Um, hypertrophic heart myopathy can cause a number of things throughout someone's lifetime. So at the time of diagnosis, someone may have mild symptoms or even no symptoms, but it's important to watch your heart over time. And we're looking for a few things. The first is, is that obstruction, where it's hard for the blood to exit the heart and get out of the heart. We have certain medications that can be used to treat obstruction, and we even have invasive procedures like surgery, or catheter-based procedures to treat or relieve that obstruction. The second thing we look for are electrical abnormalities of the heart. And those come generally in two varieties. One is electrical abnormalities from the top chambers of the heart. Those are called the atria. And those are rhythms like atrial fibrillation, if you've ever heard of AFib, um, which can lead to a stroke. And so we take that very seriously. If we diagnose atrial fibrillation in someone with HCM, we put them on a blood thinner. So that they don't have a blood clot form in the heart and they don't have a stroke. The second kind of electrical problem can come from the bottom chamber of the heart. Now, that one can be dangerous. It can even be life threatening, and it's something called ventricular tachycardia. And if we diagnose that and it's serious enough, we sometimes put in a device called a defibrillator. It goes into your chest, it's surgically implanted or put in through a surgery, and you have it for the rest of your life. But if your heart goes into an abnormal rhythm that could lead to dying suddenly, it's there, like having the paramedics with you on the inside, and it can deliver a small electric shock to bring you back to life. So that one's a very serious one that we watch for. And the last thing is that hypertrophic heart myopathy can cause something called heart failure. And that means that your heart is not able to keep up with what your body needs. And there's a small percentage of patients with HCM that develop an end stage of heart failure, where the only treatment you have left is a heart transplant. So it depends on where you are in the spectrum of disease. And fortunately, the vast majority of people with HCM are able to live a normal lifespan. And that's because of the new treatments um, that we have. Wow, that's a lot of information, but important information. I hope you all are listening and taking it in. And if you have any questions, you'll be able to, this gets to my next question. Where can someone find a doctor that actually specializes in H HCM? Um, you have to look, um, it won't be just any doctor, but you can start with your local cardiologist and ask them. And there are centers of excellence for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy that are around the country, at least in the United States. And there is a patient organization called the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Association, or HEMA. Um, and on their website, they have a map of the United States and a place where you can type in where you live or your state and find out where the nearest hypertrophic cardiomyopathy of excellence is. And then you'll know that the specialists that you see there really are experts in taking care of patients and families who have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Wow. Well, you, this is some really great information. And I'm so, I'm so appreciative that you could come on here and share that with us and my audience, because it's really part important for me, someone who does have cardiovascular disease, I, I say for uh, prevention over treatment all the time. So the more you know, the better for you. I just want to thank you and everyone for attending this live. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Owens, for being here today. We really appreciate and you just you just added so much value to us today. Thank you for having me. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye.